Dear students, last week we discussed about the process of photosynthesis in which we understand the processes of light reaction and dark reaction. Today we are going to discuss about the fate of end products of photosynthesis. So what are the end products of photosynthesis? I hope you already know that photosynthesis results in the formation of three types of end products first is the main product for plants glucose or simple sugar next is water and very precious element oxygen first some of the glucose produced during photosynthesis is oxidized immediately for the release of energy required for the metabolism of cells the rest of the glucose is converted into soluble starch. It is stored in the cells as reserve food material. It is also transported to non-photosynthetic cells in the form of sucrose. Water produced during photosynthesis is reutilized for the continuity of this process. Then Oxygen produced during photosynthesis is partially utilized by the plant cells for oxidation. Rest of O2 is released into the atmosphere through the leaf surfaces, especially through stomata. The oxygen released helps to maintain the air composition constant. This O2 is used by the animals and plants for the purpose of oxidation of glucose during respiration the process of respiration releases co2 which is utilized by the plants in photosynthesis it means respiration and photosynthesis are antagonistic to each other and help to maintain o2 and co2 concentration in the air constant okay so photosynthesis and respiration okay these both processes are interrelated with each other. Okay. Price of photosynthesis. Stomata are primarily meant for the diffusion of CO2, which is to be used for photosynthesis. But when CO2 diffuses in the at the same time, a large amount of H2O is lost due to the transpiration. So we say that plants have to pay the price of photosynthesis in the form of transpiration. Okay. Fate of carbohydrates formed in the photosynthesis. Carbohydrates formed in photosynthesis are used up in three main ways. First is respiration. Most cells receive sugar through phloem. This is broken down during respiration to liberate energy the cells require. Food storage. Some of the sugar may be stored for future use either in organs such as bulbs, tubers, combs or rhizomes or for the next generation in seeds or fruit. Usually the sugar is converted into starch for storage but quite often it is stored as sucrose as in sugarcane. In fact many of our vegetables are rarely plant food storage organs. Okay as you know you read in uh, earlier chapters of uh, your lower class as well examples are potato tubers are storage stems carrot turnip and beetroot are storage roots in many cases carbohydrates are converted to oils for storage that is mustard oil or groundnut oil next is for growth sugar is also transported to actively growing parts of the plant where these provide energy and are used in the formation of cellulose fats and proteins next is transportation or translocation of organic compounds in the plants primarily the process of photosynthesis that is formation of glucose and other organic compounds takes place in the cells of leaves but these organic compounds are needed by all cells of a plant okay as in humans also formation of glucose in the leaf cells in is continuous and very rapid it cannot be transported to other cells with the same rapidity 
that is why most of the glucose is converted into insoluble starch for the purpose of temporary storage at night the stored starch is reconverted into soluble sucrose the soluble sucrose in the form of solution is transported or translocated to all the cells of the plant sucrose possesses through the veins of leaves down through the phloem the stem and roots the sucrose is converted into glucose in different cells it is partially oxidized in respiration to release energy rest of glucose is reconverted into starch for the purpose of storage so there are some adaptation in leaf for photosynthesis first is large surface area the surface area of the leaf is very large it helps in the absorption of maximum light energy from the sunlight okay next is leaf arrangement the leaf are arranged on the stem in such a way right angle to light source so the maximum surface area of leaves exposed to sunlight next is chloroplast chloroplast containing chlorophylls are concentrated in the upper layers of the leaf cells near the cell walls it helps in trapping maximum radiant energy from the sunlight quickly numerous stomata in the leaves allow quick exchange of o2 and co2 through them thinness of leaves further enhances the rapid transport of material between adjoining cells network of veins in the leaves helps in the rapid transport to and from the mesophyll cells of the leaves now there are some factors affecting of photosynthesis first is external factor what first is light radiant energy of light is an important factor in three aspects that is intensity quality and duration okay about 0.2 to 1% of the total solar radiation is utilized in photosynthesis so very less amount within limits increase in light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis at very highlight intensity the photosynthetic apparatus may get damaged this phenomenon is called solarization okay if very high light in intensity is giving to the photosynthetic apparatus so it may be damaged so you can see that at uh, it by this uh, graph that effect of light intensity on rate of photosynthesis as light intensity increases rate of photosynthesis also increases photosynthesis is greatly influenced by light quite quality blue and red regions of the visible spectrum are most effective and green the least the process of photosynthesis is also directly proportional to the duration of light okay next is carbon dioxide if light intensity is good and the temperature is optimum then increase in co2 concentration increases the rate of photosynthesis temperature temperature at which the rate of photosynthesis maximum is called optimum temperature it is 35 degree centigrade the rate of photosynthesis goes on increasing from lower temperature to 35 degree centigrade it gain start decreasing above 35 degree centigrade and stops above 40 degree centigrade a rise of 10 degree centigrade below the optimum temperature doubles the rate of photosynthesis it means if temperature is 45 degree then it will be the reaction which are normally running on 35 degree centigrade it actually happens double of the rate of photosynthesis provided the light intensity is high it is called cuten law so you can see that effect of temperature on rate of photosynthesis so here uh you can see that uh, optimum temperature is here and if it increases the rate of photosynthesis also increase so you can see that in 40 degree centigrade temperature it is start decreasing or stops at the foot, uh, temperature of 40 degree centigrade for example a rise from 20 to 30 degree c or 22 to 32 degree c or 35 25 to 35 degree c doubles the rate of photosynthesis or i am uh, wrong at the time it is not uh, above the 35 degree centigrade it is start decreasing okay water 
Under normal conditions, water has no direct bearing on the rate of photosynthesis, but if the water supply is poor, then a decrease in photosynthesis has been observed. Okay, normal condition has no direct effect, but the poor, uh, if uh, supply of water is low, then the rate of photosynthesis is also low because it is also an important constituent of uh, the process of photosynthesis. Some internal factors are also responsible. First is chlorophyll. Deficiency of magnesium causes loss of profit. Hence, leaves are not able to absorb sunlight. So I hope today you will be understand the processes of uh, transportation and factors affecting the process of photosynthesis. If you find any difficulty and you have uh, any query, you can ask me anytime. Thank you.